the math journals for today's lesson. My turn. I can display data in a line plot. Your turn. I can display data in a line plot. So today our lesson is going to be about how we display data in a line plot. So please get your objective written for today's lesson. Once your objective is written, also have your math book out and open to page 705. 705. You will know you're on the right page because your math book page will match my screen. See, most people are getting their math book. If you're still writing, Yep, you got it. Okay, fingers under A. Voices together. A fifth grade class recorded the high of each student. How could you organize the data? Make a line plot to solve this problem. So let's look at this question. What is the question this is asking us? Put your finger under the question this is asking us. Let's read the question together. Voices together. How could you organize the data? Will you underline our question so you know what evidence we're looking for? Then what does it give us in the middle of the page? What is this? What is that, Gannon? The chart. It's a chart that has a bunch of numbers in it. And what are these numbers rounded to? Who can see based on the title of the chart? What are those numbers rounded to? Everyone. Nearest, nearest half inch. So a student might be 55 and three quarters, but they rounded it to either a half or the nearest hole because of the nearest half inch. So at your table groups, will you please talk about how you might organize this data? Talk together about what you might do. Back together in three, two, one. Give me a thumbs up if you feel like you have a way you can organize your data. Okay, I want you in this space on your page to organize your data based on how you talked as a table group. And I'm going to be walking around looking for some excellent examples that I can show up here on the document camera. So, what do we know we need to have on our, on our line plot? Who can tell me? What do we know we need to have? We need to have what, Lexi? Uh, we could use a number line. That's definitely one way. We need to include the half inches. Do you think that we should just draw a line and leave it blank? No. Yes or no? Thumbs up, yes, thumbs down, no. Why no? Why should we not just leave it blank? Chase? Um, because it wouldn't make any sense and then you can't figure the question out if it's just blank. It wouldn't make sense if it was just blank and had a bunch of dots or X's. So why do we need them? Randy, why do we need numbers along the bottom? So we, it, so it doesn't get all mixed up and we know what to Okay, so go ahead. I'm going to give you one minute to see if you can organize your data like the question asked. Okay, would you please look at your face partner and share with them how you organize your data. And if your hair is the shortest, you are going to talk first today. Go. Okay. 
So Avery, what did you hear Bryce say? What did Bryce do? How did he organize it? Good. Good job. Way to explain that. Back together in five, four, three. Thank you for getting so quiet. Zero. Randy, would you please come bring your math book and share how you did yours? I did the number line, and then I put all the possible numbers available at the bottom, and then I counted how many there were, and I added X's under, I mean, above the numbers. Thumbs up if you did something similar to that. Let's give a woo woo. One, two, three. Woo woo, Randy. Nice work. All right. Now let's look at this question at the bottom. We're going to read this question together. What math practice are we using for this question? Math practice eight. What is math practice eight? We're using what? What are we? Strategies that we just learned today? No, that we've learned before. Strategies that we've learned before. So we're going to think. So you're going to say, self, think. What have I learned before that helps me answer this question? Let's read the question together. Fingers under how? Voices together. How does organizing the data help you see the height that occurs most often? Explain. Talk to your diagonal partner about how organizing your data helps you see which is most which occurs most often. Go. Okay, in your own words, write me one sentence about how organizing the data helps you see which height, now that you've talked about it with a partner. So in your own words, write what makes sense to you. Oh, I love that I'm seeing complete sentences, I'm seeing capital letters, I'm seeing the question restated. Okay, and I'm going to walk around and ask a few of you to read your answers, and I'm going to have you speak loud in the mic. <coughs> so Bryce, will you read what you wrote? Um, the, um, it is the highest with the most X's or any other symbol, and it sticks out because it has the most, like, it tells you the most X's or other symbols. Beautiful. Let's give a round of applause. All right, Alyssa. It's easier with the numbers spread out so you can see the highest one faster instead of just looking at a whole chart full of numbers. Beautiful. Make it rain. Chase. Um, organizing the data helps me to understand which higher curves most often like 50 and a half and 58 and a half because they're both six. Beautiful. Let's give her a woo woo. Woo woo. Chase. I love the way that those sentences were restating the question and helping you use your own thinking of something we've learned in the past. What math practice standard was that? Eight. Eight. We use math practice standard eight. Would you please turn your page in your book, math book, while we go through our visual learning. How can you use a line plot to organize and represent measurement data? Let's find out. So before we go any further, how can you use a line plot? How can you use one to organize and represent measurement data? Think for a minute. How might you use a line plot to organize and represent measurement data? That's what we're going to be talking about as we watch this video. The dogs in Paulina's pet shop have the following weights. The weights are in pounds. How can you organize this information in a line plot? Measurement data that is organized is easier to use. Organize the data. Write the weights from least to greatest. 
Why do we want to write the weights from in order from least to greatest? Why do we want to do that? I'm going to bring the microphone so we can hear you. Why does it matter that we write it from least to greatest, Aiden? So then you can organize them faster, so because as you can just organize the six to six, so, so then you can count them all out, and then you can just put them in the blind pot as fast as you can. Awesome. Who has another idea? Brielle, do you have another idea? Okay. It said that she had a pet shop, and it might like if a customer wants a big dog or a small dog, it might be easier to find out what their weight is and. Okay, so if someone wants a dog that's bigger or smaller, it's easier to find out how many of each dog. Asher, do you have an idea? Do you want to repeat it? It's just like, it's just more organized because you can just like count the numbers from six, seven, eight, and then like 11 and a half, and then you can get higher and higher. So it's just more organized. Awesome. So looking at this data right here without even having it on a line plot. <laughs> What numbers can you tell we have multiples of in pounds? What's the smallest number we have multiples of? Everyone. Six. Six. What's the greatest number we have multiples of? Twelve, Twelve and a fourth. Twelve and a fourth. How many twelve and a fourths do we have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. We have five. Is it easier to look at the data this way or this way? Say one for top, two for bottom. Show me. Two, it's easier to look at it when it's in order from least to greatest. Let's keep watching. You can also organize the data in a frequency table. The frequency is how many times a given response occurs. What do the columns in the frequency table represent? They show the different measurement values and how often each value appears. How will this information help you make a line plot? So I want you to turn to your elbow partner and answer this question. What's the question we're answering, everyone? How will this information help you make a line plot? So how does the information in this table help you make a line plot? Talk to your elbow partner. share my partner shared that it's mostly like the dots because all you do is count the tally marks or look at the numbers because you can see which is bigger or smaller awesome what did your partner say my partner said that it's easier and more organized so you can already know what you're going to do with the line plot thumbs up if yes thumbs down if no is is there a better way to do this? No. So yes? No. No. Can you do it either way? Is either way okay? Yeah. Yes. This way is a frequency table where it tallies and then tells us how many. This is ordering them from what? Least to greatest. Okay. Let's keep going. The information in the frequency table tells you the values that need to be marked on the line and how many dots to put above each value on the line. Make a line plot. First, draw the number line using an interval of one-fourth. Then, mark a dot for each value in the data set. Write a title for the line plot. So point to where this is in your book, as we're following along. What title did they make for this chart? Weights of dogs. Weights of dogs. What is the label they used at the bottom? Pounds. Pounds. They used pounds. Did they, um, how did they mark their number line? What kind of numbers did they use? Bryce? They used like whole numbers and then they split it into the fourths. They used whole numbers and then each hash mark represents what, Bryce? A four. A four. Because did we have numbers that had fourths in them? Yes. 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 So they weren't exactly 12. So if you look, it's 12 and a fourth, right over that hash mark, okay? What does each dot on the line represent? What do the numbers on the line represent? Each dot represents one dog, and the numbers represent the weights of the dogs in pounds. 
What observations can you make about the dogs in the pet shop? Who has an observation they can make? What, who has something they can make by looking at that chart? What do we know about these dogs? Nick, do you have an observation you can make? Well, the 12 and 1 fourth dogs, they have more, there's more dogs that weigh 12 and 1 fourth pounds. Than any other dog, right? Who has another observation they can make? Gabe, do you have an observation you can make? Um, the dogs that weigh seven and one fourth pound and 11 and a half pounds appear the least. Appear the least, and how many of each dog is there? Um, just one. Just one of each dog. What about dogs that weigh nine or 10 pounds? How many of them are there? Show me on your fingers. There's zero dogs. Is it okay to have a chart that has zeros left over like that? Yes. Yes, because we don't have any dogs that weigh zero pound or that weigh nine or ten pounds. Their weights can be organized into two groups. Six dogs weigh from six to eight and one half pounds, and six dogs weigh from eleven and one half to twelve and one fourth pounds. Now you know how to use a line plot to organize and represent measurement data. We are going to create our own classroom line plot using the sticky notes I gave you on your desk. So the first thing, the first one we're going to do so that we can create a plot together to look at is the number of siblings we have. The number of siblings we have. So, whoop, turn it sideways. The number of siblings that we have. What number do you think we should start with along the bottom of our chart? It's not very straight, but what number should we start with, do you think, Nick? One. One? Do we agree or disagree with one? Some people are disagreeing. Why are we disagreeing that starting it with one, Jessica? Because some people might be only child. Some people might be an only child. Is that true, Nick? Some people here might not have siblings. So what could, what could we start with it instead? Zero. Zero, because some people don't have any siblings. What number do you think we need to go to on this end? Do we just go zero and one? No. No, probably not. At your table group, come up with a number that you think we should go to on this end. And Chris, I also want you to come up with why you came up with that number. Why are you choosing that number? Okay, back together in three, two, one. Lucas, will you tell us what your table said, what number and why? Talk in the mic. Um, they said uh, six because... Why six? Jason, help him out. Why six? Because he said six because of um, like some families have a lot of kids in them. So then like I've met a family with uh, six siblings in them before. Okay, thumbs up if we agree with six. Thumbs down if we disagree and think we need a different number. Six, I'm seeing lots of thumbs up for six. Does anyone in our class have more than six brothers and sisters? Oh, we have an outlier. Someone outside of our data. Chase, how many do you have? Uh, why like brothers and no. sisters? We'll, we'll how many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, six. six? Okay, so six is a good number. So should I count by whole increments of one? Yes. Yeah? So one. I'm going to come over here. Two, three, four, five, six. And what I would like you to do is with your whiteboard marker, you're also going to create this on your desk so that you can represent what we're doing. I will call you table group at a time to put your sticky note over the number of how many siblings you have. We're going to start with Easton's group. Not counting yourself. So how many siblings do you have not including yourself? Great question. So Ethan and Gannon can put your sticky note up here. Right down the table. Four. 
Lucas, thank you for drawing our number line. Thanks, Asher, for drawing the number line on your desk. Sophie's table group. Deegan's table group. Gabe's table group. Nick's table group. Randy's table group. Is there anyone I didn't call? So you're recreating this on your desk. How many students in our class have zero siblings? One. One. How do we know that one student had zero siblings? How could we look at this and know that one student had zero siblings? Wyatt? Because one sticky note is on zero. There's one sticky note. There's one data point that tells us that one student has zero siblings. How many students in our class have one sibling? Show me on your fingers. Five. We have one, two, three, four, five. Five data points above our one that shows us we have five students in our class with, zero, with, five, with one brother or sister. What about two? Show me on your fingers. How many students have siblings with, of two? Again, we have five. So do these two columns match when you draw them on your desk? Yes, they're the same height. Why are they the same height? Sophie, why are one and two the same height? They both have the same amount of siblings. That's how many data points we have. How many threes are there? I didn't leave very much room. But how many threes are there? Three. Three. There's three threes. And then how many fours? Four. 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 How many fives? Two. two. And how many sixes? One. one. So on your desk, will you circle the number that has the most siblings? Circle the number that has the most siblings. What number did you circle? One and two. One and two. We have two numbers that have the most. Would you underline the numbers that have the least? Underline the numbers that have the least. What numbers have the least? Zero. zero and six. How many siblings did zero and six have? One. one. How many did one and two have? Five. Okay, what kind of plot did you just create? Line. A line plot. So, what was our objective today? I can display data in a line plot. Did you just display data in a line plot? Thumbs up or down? Yes. Okay, erase your um, desk. I'm going to pass out to you now our teaching tool number 12. This is our line plot teaching tool. If you will please glue this in your math journal. This is teaching tool number 12. One that we've seen many times this year. What do we call these on this paper? On this paper. Number lines. We have used number lines for all kinds of different things. Ordering fractions, comparing decimals. Now we're using line plot or number lines to display data. But on our number line, we are going to look at the very first one. We're going to start our first tally, our first tick mark at zero. And then we're going to count by fives. So zero, then what will our next mark be? Five. Five. Then our next one? Ten. Ten. Then our next one? Fifteen. Okay, so counting my fives, and I want you to stop when you get to 30. If you want to pass 30, that's okay. Okay, on your desk you have your bag of manipulative cubes. You'll each need your bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our cubes to represent our data. Something for our hands to touch and play with for a minute. We're going to say that these numbers represent the number of minutes it takes to get to school. 
So where should we write that? On the top. Should we write it on the top or the bottom? Bottom. The bottom, right? Under our data, we're going to write minutes to school. Or minutes. It represents minutes. Thanks. If it takes you only five minutes to get to school, raise your hand. Okay, how many hands are raised? One, two, three, four, five. How many cubes should you put over five? Five. five. <laughs> Five cubes laying straight over five. Beautiful. How many students, I mean, how many of you does it take 10 minutes to get to school? One, two, three, four, five. Another five. Will this tower, this row of data, be the same height or a different height than the one before it? Same. same. Why will it be the same? Tell your elbow partner why it will be the same. Beautiful. What is our next number of minutes? Who can tell me? What's the next number of minutes, Avery? We did 5 and 10. What's next? 15. How many of you does it take 15 minutes to get to school? Two people. So will this group of data be greater than or less than our last two? Less, less, less than. How many less than will it be? Three. 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 How did you know it would be three? Because there are three. Megan, how did you know it would be three? Because there are three more on five, so. Okay, so 20. How many of you does it take 20 minutes? One, two, three, four, five. Another five. These are some of our bus riders, I bet. Yep. Yep. So five people. And now we have 25 minutes. Anybody take 25 minutes? Two. Gabe and Alyssa, two. So five, five, two, five, two. How many people? Two. Two. The cubes are so messed up. Okay. After 25 is 30. Does it take anyone 30 minutes? One person? Okay, one person on 30. And is there anyone who hasn't told me how long it takes them to get to school? That's everyone. We have everyone's data. So let's double check. Let's count how many cubes we have total to see if we have enough data. So count all your cubes. Everyone, how many cubes did you have total? 20. 20, that represents the 20 people that are here today that we have data points for. So now we did this physically with our cubes I want you to represent this on your line plot that we have in your journal. So can you keep the cubes in there? Will they stay in there? No, right? They'll fall right out. So I need you to represent on your journal this with data points. I see Gabe using X's. I see other people using the circle, the dots to represent your data. Now something that I see that we might want to just make sure we remember, if I can have your eyes up here for one minute, three, two, one, five and ten, did they have the same amount? Yeah. Yeah. So if I have my X's like this, and then on ten I make bigger X's like this, does that represent the same thing? Yeah. No, we want to make sure that our data points are the same size so that when we look at it, our five and five compare. We don't want one to be huge and one to be small. Why might we not want that? Tell your face partner why we might not want them to be two different sizes. Yeah. 
Thumbs up if you have your data represented on the line plot. Okay, looks like everyone has their data represented. We're going to skip down two number lines. Skip down two number lines. This time, we're going to represent our shoe sizes. What size shoe we have. So, we're going to start with one, and we'll go through 11. So label your line plot, we're skipping two on the number lines. Label it one to 11. Under our numbers, what title, or what label are we going to give it? Under the numbers. Say it loud. Shoe sizes. Shoe sizes. Because when I look at it, on the last one, the numbers represented how many minutes, but on this one, it represents how many shoe sizes. Is it important to have a label so we know what measurement we're representing? Yes. Yes. Hey, if you wear a shoe size one, raise your hand. No, you don't. No, he's not. He had something else. What about shoe size two? Three? Hey, we have one for three. So get one of your cubes and put it on the three. What about four? Hey, we have one, two, three, four fours. So four cubes. Four cubes. How many fives? One, two, three, four, five. Five fives. We'll see. How many sixes? One, two, three, four. We have four sixes. How many sevens? Two, three, four. Four sevens. How many eights? Eight. Nine. What the? Three nines. How many tens? Any elevens? I'm putting myself on there. I, I wear an 11, so add one for 11. How can yours pee? I do my pee. How many data points was for eight? Three. Okay, this time we won't have 20 pieces of data. How many will we have? 21, because I added myself in there. So look at your cubes, make sure you have 21. As you're displaying your data on your line plot, so again, we represented it with our cubes. Now I want you to represent it with our math symbols. Talk to your face partner about why it's important for data to be organized correctly. Okay, back together in three, two, one. Go ahead and put your cubes back in your bag and zip them off. Put them back in the middle of the table. And we're going to look back at the bottom of page 706 in your math journal. This is about the weights in dogs. Sorry, not your math journal, math book. And we're going to read the convince me. So find the convince me. What math practice does it look like we're using for the convince me? Two. 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 We're using math practice two, which is reasoning. So you will be able to think about the words and numbers to solve problems. So what numbers are we using in this um, in the dogs? What was the unit of measurement? Their pounds, so their weight. What are the words we're using in this problem to be able to reason? We have to be able exactly to read the titles to know what they're talking about. So we are thinking about numbers and words to solve this problem. Fingers under which? Voices together. Which way are the birds most often? Which way are the birds least often? How many birds are there in the 
How can you tell from the blind cloth? So we're looking at the dog data, and we want to know what weight occurs most, which weight occurs least, and how can we tell? So will you please reason with numbers and words to answer those questions? Which weight occurs the most? Which rate occurs the least? And how do you know? And then I'm going to bring the microphone around to hear some answers. Let's see, lots of the most and the least correct. And so now you're explaining your thinking. How do you know by looking at that table? 30 more seconds. If you finish early, see if you can think of another reason. Okay, Asher, will you use the mic and read us what you wrote? Okay, I said you can look at the plot and 12 and one fourth pounds has the most dots with five. The least is seven and one fourth and 12 and one and a half with only one each. I know because you can just count them up to see which has the most on the one. Awesome, let's give him a woo woo. Woo woo. Do line plots give us information? Thumbs up if yes, thumbs down if no. Yes, they give us information. Is the information always the same? No. no. We need to look at two things to know what the information is. We need to look at the, the line plot. So we need to look at what? What do we call that underneath the numbers? Uh, no, uh, the, the title. The, the title's at the top. That tells us what it is. And then what do we do below the numbers? Write the, the unit of measurement. measurement. There we go. So everyone repeat after me. Below the numbers in a line plot. Below the numbers in a line plot. We find the unit of measurement. We find the unit of measurement. Above the numbers in a line plot. Above the numbers in a line plot. There will be a title. There will be a title. Where might a good place to write this be so that we don't forget? Our notes, our notes in our math journal. Let's write that. So below the numbers, we find the unit of? Measurement. Everyone, the unit of? Measurement. measurement. And above the data points, above the numbers, we find the? Title. So let's get that in our notes section so that we can remember. Below the numbers, we find the unit of measurement Above the data point is a title. I love that Randy's doing an example in hers. Some people are drawing one to, to get it in their brain. Gabe did a quick sketch of it. Beautiful, awesome. Okay, if you would go ahead and put this back in your math book once you finish writing your notes. We're going to look at the guided practice questions in our math book. We're on page 707. Those guided practice questions. Okay, number one, fingers under in. Boys, in a loud voice, ready, read. In the line plot of the always on the previous page, what does each dot represent? What do those dots represent? What do they represent, Randy? The dogs. The dogs, but not just the dogs, but their specific weight. weight. The weight of the dogs. So am I just going to write weight of dogs? No. No. No, what will I write, Cannon? How much pounds each dog weighs? So the dog represents the weight of dogs. Dot represents the weight of dogs. Okay, number two, we haven't quite talked about as much, so we're going to read it and then discuss it at our table groups. Number two, girls, fingers under in, voices together. In a line plot, how do you determine the values to show on the number line? So discuss that in your table group, how you're going to determine what numbers to put on the number line. Go ahead, discuss. Uh, 
What numbers are we recording? The weight of the pumpkins, right? So I want to be able to look at this and know that the numbers down here mean pounds. Oh, I thought you meant like the title. So what will our title be? Weights of pumpkins. Correct. Good. Okay. Do we need to start this line plot at zero? No. no. What is our lowest weight of pumpkins? Three. Three and a half. So would it be appropriate to count by to count at three and a half? Yeah. Now, this is a little different. What is the pound, the weight of that one? Five and a quarter, five and a fourth. So, should we maybe count, this is an idea, by if we start by three, four, five, six, seven, and then we could do tally marks to represent. What would the tally marks represent? The frequency, which would be what if we're looking at the fractions? Okay, so if I have my number line, like this, and I do three, four, five, six, oops, seven, and eight. How am I going to represent the half and the fourth? What do I need to do? How am I going to represent that? Gannon? Then you would write the little mini lines 
I'm going to write the, the little ta um, hash marks, the little mini lines, but how many am I going to write? And how do I know? How many will I write and how do I know? Sophie? So why did you say three? So what would this one represent? One fourth. One fourth. Then I would have one half. one half. And then three. Now do I have to label them like this or can I just go like this? Just go like that. I can go like that, but is it important to know this? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because our pumpkins have fractions in their weight. So go ahead and get your line plot drawn. Good job. And then we need to plot our data. So how many pumpkins weigh three and a half pounds, everyone? Two. 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 So I'm going to put my two X's over three and a half pounds. How many pumpkins weighed five and a fourth pound? Three. 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 How many weighed seven pounds? Four. 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 Run out of room. And how many weighed eight pounds? One. One. So now you have your line plot drawn. You've displayed your data in your line plot. I want you to circle the number that had the most, the highest frequency. Which weight of pumpkins had the highest frequency? Circle it. What number did you circle? Seven. Seven. Underline the number that had the lowest frequency. What number did you underline? Eight. eight. Just eight? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Great. Okay. Now we're ready for some independent practice. So I want to see a fist of five. How do you feel about this? Fist of five. How are we feeling? Beautiful. Hands down. I would like you independently to do problems four through seven and then turn your page on the back I want you to circle eight and thirteen. Eight and thirteen. What is the expectation after you finish four through seven and eight and thirteen? Practice, practice stations. stations. You have your practice station guide. All the tools are in our center um, mat over here. If you have questions, please come ask, and I will be calling you some of you to the back table to work with me. Brielle? Um, okay, so Brielle asked a really good question. I'm going to have her ask it again so that we can hear it. So Brielle, will you talk in the microphone and ask so everyone can hear? Um, how... It doesn't tell us how much, like, there is 11 and 1 fourth. It just tells us what number to use. So what do we mark on the line plot? So she's asking the difference between when we have a frequency table like this and it tells us how many versus when we have numbers like this. So how could we order these on our paper so that we could see them? Least to greatest. So if we order these least to greatest, then we would see, how many 11 and 1 fourths do you see? Three. But if we order them least to greatest and you see that, you would see that there's three. So how many data points do we have for 11 and 1 fourth? Three. So you're right, it doesn't tell us in this form. It doesn't just give us the frequency. But what it does is it tells us how many of each. So we have to count them or order them in order to do that. Does that make sense? Any other questions about this before I turn you loose? Okay, looks like you're busy at work already. And I'm going